I'm going to start by showing you guys all the ingredients that we're going to use for today's delicious or hard soup. The first on my list is my beef. You can also use goat meat or any other type of meat that you have. I also have some cow tripe, what we call shaki. I have stock fish. You guys know there's no Igbo soup or ibotic soup that is complete without stock fish. So here's my stock fish. I have some dried fish. This is also very important for any native or ethnic soup. And I have coco yam. This is what I'm going to use as my thickener today. Yes, uh, yeah, I'm going to use coco yam. You can also use coco yam flour if that's what you have. I have some salt, of course. This is some dried chili pepper. I'm also going to be using some scotch bonnet or uh, habanero pepper. Yes, I love the spiciness of this thing and I also love the taste. Yes. I also have crayfish. Oh my god, yes. is there any soup that is complete without crayfish? So yeah, this is my crayfish. And of course, I have my seasoning cubes. I have a mixture of no star, all the different seasoning cubes. I have ogiri. Yep, this is also very important. And I have some chopped onions. I know you guys always see me use green onions in all my cookings, but nope, not today, not for my Oha soup. <laughs> So this is my dried or have vegetables. Yep, this is what we have living in diaspora, living in the abroad. And yeah, sometimes when we cook with dried vegetables, it does not have that very unique, authentic taste that you will get when you use a fresh vegetable. So because of that, I'm going to be using some spinach. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this in my soup. So I decided to go with some fresh spinach because spinach as a vegetable has a very very mild taste. It doesn't have a harsh taste that will take away the taste of the oha vegetable and yes it's also going to help to bring out the freshness of the oha vegetable when the soup is done. I'm also going to be using some palm oil. This is also a very important ingredient. So now that I'm done showing you guys all the ingredients, let's start cooking. I already have some water boiling in the pots. I am going to start by cooking my cocoyam. I told you guys already that the cocoyam is going to be used as my thickener. You can use cocoyam flour or you can also use yam if that is what you have. So in another pot, I am going to cook my meat. So I just put in my beef and now I'm going to introduce my cow tripe. And I'm also going to cook my stock fish. These are the hardest meat that I have. And can you guys see I am already using my new set of pots. I just launched them and I am so excited. So yeah, I'm going to go on to put my seasoning, my salt, my seasoning cube. This is my chopped habanero pepper scotch bonnet. I'm also going to add this in now. I love to do this. I love to cook my peppers with my meat because I love that spicy peppery taste that the meat gets, you know, when it's done. So I'm just going to use a wooden spoon like I told you guys before. Wooden spoon is very safe for pots. I'm going to use a spoon to combine all that together and then I'll add some water. And after that, I will start cooking. But did you guys notice that I forgot to add some onions? I forgot. So yep, I'm going to add my onions now and then I'll cover it and let that cook. So after about 20 minutes of cooking the cocoyam, uh, I am back to check on it. You want the cocoyam to get, you know, really very soft so that it will be easy for you to pound or blend. And yeah, at this point, the cocoyam is done. I'm just going to do a quick check and you guys can see I can easily uh, use my finger to pierce through it. So now I am going to peel off the skin and then I'll put it in a blender and start blending. So after about 20 minutes of cooking my meat, I am back to check on it and at this point I'm going to start introducing some other ingredients. But first I'm going to give it a nice little stir and then I am going to introduce my dried fish. Yes, I don't want the dried fish to scatter all over the place, that's why I'm putting it at this point. And right now I am just adding my crayfish. I'm also going to add my ogiri or ogiri igbo, whatever, whichever one you call it. I'm also going to add my palm oil. You guys, you want to add a generous amount of palm oil because palm oil also adds to the taste of this soup. So yeah, be generous with your palm oil. And 
I am also going to add some dried chili pepper, blended chili pepper. Yes, I love my soup to come out very peppery. So if you don't want, you don't need to add a lot. Okay. I am also going to add my uh, to add some seasoning cube. Actually, one seasoning cube because I already cooked the meat with uh, with some salt and seasoning cubes. So yeah, I just added a little bit of water and then I will give that a nice little stir. So after stirring, I am going to now introduce my cocoa yam. I told you guys this is what is going to thicken the soup and you don't want to add a lot you guys can see that the cocoa yam is plenty I had I, I blended a lot of it but I'm just gonna scoop about five or six spoons into the soup it depends on how much soup you're making but yeah you never ever want to add too much of the thickener in your soup it's gonna make it too lumpy when when it is cooked so I'm gonna cover that and let it cook and while it's cooking I am going to rinse my or have vegetable you know I'm using the, the dried one I'm going to rinse it with some cold water and you guys can see how I'm doing this I put it in a filter so that the water can just run through it because it, it comes with a lot of dirt and sand and you don't want all those things in your soup so yeah this is a very good way to rinse your vegetables and let all the sand and dirt come out of it So it's been about five minutes since I added the, the cocoyam paste into the soup and at this point it has fully dissolved. As you guys can see it is it has already done its job. The soup is looking very thick, very, very far too thick for my liking. So yeah I'm just going to add a little bit of water because when the soup eventually cools down it's going to um, it's going to thicken up again. So yeah it is okay to add just a little bit of water. And now I am going to add my oha, the main, the main, the main ingredient. Yes, if you live in Nigeria, you know you are so lucky to, to have fresh oha leaves. So yeah, after adding the, the dried or hard vegetables, I'm going to cover that and let it cook for about a minute, just a minute. And then finally, I'm going to introduce my fresh spinach. I told you guys that I'm using spinach because it is very very mild so it's not going to take away the taste of the oha completely so just a little uh, bit or just a little sprinkling of some fresh spinach and yep yeah, I'm not even going to continue cooking at this point I'm going to turn off my stove because the heat alone is going to cook the spinach I just give that a nice little stir and you guys our soup is ready ready as ready So here is our delicious and beautiful bowl of oha soup. You guys can see the soup is popping, okay? This is not one soup that you are going to bring some uh, low-carb fufu, cabbage fufu, oatmeal fufu. That is just an insult. It's an insult, okay? Bring some fufu, some better pounded yam or gari eba. That's how you show respect to this oha soup. <laughs> Thank you guys so so much for watching if you enjoyed watching you know what to do give this video a huge thumbs up subscribe if you have not you can always share my videos that would be awesome and thank you guys i will see you all in my next one bye